G'day and welcome to the Geek Teacher. This is our first tutorial for Photoshop. Um, I'm sure I'll go back and make all the basic ones and I'll probably make a few more after this. But today what we're going to do is work on merging a couple of photos together so that they're fairly seamless, like this fierce apple that you see in front of you. Um, this apple has been made from this photo and this photo. So as you can see, we're going to need to use some um, selection and some blurring and some transparency, cropping and all that wonderful stuff. We're also going to be looking at a tool uh, for transforming it. So we're going to be looking at transform tools, in particular scale and warp. So to make this work, you're going to need Photoshop um, and you're going to need these two images. You can download those off our uh, learning management system. Alternatively, go and Google some. You will find some. Um, try to make sure that they're uh, Creative Commons approved and all that kind of stuff. Oh, I think these ones are. I'm not sure. But anyway, there you go. Um, so first of all, what you're going to do is you're going to open Apple in Photoshop, um, which is always fun. So just open that up in Photoshop. like that and you should notice you've got a lovely green apple as a JPEG it's sitting over here on the background then what we're going to do is come across to uh, angry apple and we're going to drag the line onto there as well and it ends up looking like that now when you drag it on like that that is fine to be facing the wrong direction and everything because we will just work on it so tick that box up in the top um, I'll do that again just so you can see I went maybe a little bit too fast drag your line across and then come up here to tick the accept button. Right, so now you've got two layers. You've got the line and the background. What we're then going to do is come up to edit and then down to transform. And I would like that to be facing the other direction. So I'm going to come over to rotate, uh, to flip horizontal, which automatically puts it out that way. Now, what we've got here is a fantastic picture of a line on top of an apple. It's not exactly what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is so that I can see that the placement of that mouth is right, we're going to come up to the opacity on the line layer, make sure it's the line layer, come up to the opacity over here and take that down to about, well, wherever it fits. So for me, it's around about 46%, could be 50, that's okay. Now it's still with the line uh, layer selected, what we're going to do is come up to edit and then down to transform and we're going to scale it. We need to make that mouth larger and we're also going to then uh, move it into the right spot. So click on scale, so it's edit, transform and then scale. We're going to move that down a bit and then we're... Right there, so come up to edit, transform and then scale and this will allow us to make it larger and we'll also be able to reposition it. So I'm just going to stretch that out like that and then drag it down until I've got the mouth and it pretty much the point that I want and the size that I want. Now I want to position it so that the mouth is slightly outside the apple so that when we skew the apple out that it will follow that whoops it will follow that jawline so it's kind of popping out there like that and out like that so that we've got the lovely teeth extended as is. So if you're happy with that you click on the tick um, and then we'll come back over here and put the opacity back up at 100% for that layer because what we're going to do now is zoom in. Now there's two ways you can zoom, you can click on the magnifier and then click on the portion you want or control plus will zoom in, control minus will unzoom. If you want, if you've zoomed in too far and you want to go back out, press alt and then uh, your magnifying glass or control minus will zoom you back out as well. But we want to be fairly zoomed in. Pressing the spacebar gives you the hand so you can move it around while you're zoomed. Now there are multiple ways that you can select it. We've learnt to use the um, lasso tool, polygon lasso tool and then you could select each one of those but today we're going to use the uh, selection brush because it's quicker and then we're just going to brush the areas that we want 
Now one pixel is probably too small. So we're going to brush the area that we want until it's all selected. If you happen to get a little bit more like you do there, that's okay. You can come and fix that up later. That's actually fairly easy to do. So that was using the eraser tool. Um, you want some of the tongue that just adds some of that feature of the bite. So we're happy with that. Um, now what we're going to do is come up and say edit, no, not edit, to select, and then select the inverse. So notice that the marching ants now also have this one. So that was select and then inverse. So it selects everything except for the mouth. Make sure you're on the line um, layer and then press delete. And then press delete. And there you go. It's not directly editable. Notice this icon, layer icon here. We need to come to that. Right click on that and then go rasterize layer, which turns it into a picture. Then we can delete to our heart's content. So now we've got a mouth sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Notice I've still got that there. That's okay. I'm going to come up to my eraser and then select my mouth again and just clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of all the bits that I don't want like that. It doesn't have to be perfect as you'll see why in just a little bit. So just cleaning that up. Okay, I'm quite happy to make mistakes on my videos. It's how I learn and how you learn and we all learn together. Isn't that wonderful? Excellent. Try to make it fairly smooth because that's what they are. Rightio, so zooming out you can see that that's looking a little bit better. All right, going to deselect, so for that you can go control D like I did, just did, or come up to select and then deselect. Now what we're going to do is grab the blur tool. It's this funny looking uh, drop looking thing. If it's not one of those, if you press and hold it'll get the hidden menu, just choose the blur tool. And then we're just going to blur the edges a bit just to make it so it eases in with the green a little bit better no harsh jaggy edges the harsh edges aren't cool um, and this is where what I was saying about it not being perfect comes into play okay so now we've got that wonderful um, section now what we can do is we're going to come up here and we're going to now modify the apple so it looks like it's biting. So to do this we're going to choose the background layer double click on it so it gets rid of the lock and then up to edit transform and what we're going to do now actually no we don't want to do that now that we're on our apple layer we need to come over and we're going to lasso tool and select a portion of the apple like that, actually too big, just a proportion of the apple that we're going to work on like that and now we're going to come up to edit transform and then warp now what warp does is lets you play with any of these points um, what I should have done beforehand and I won't do that, there we go what I should have done beforehand is duplicate this layer so I'm going to come over here and duplicate the layer. The reason for that is when we're working on it we don't want the background to be showing as transparent. So on the layer copy we're going to come back up to edit, transform and then warp and then we're going to pull that out until it gets to the mouth might take a bit of stretching now remember you want a little bit of overlap because that's what it looks like on the real one. Gonna move that back up a little bit just so that it's kind of blending in. So we've got that one done. Press the tick when you're happy with it and then you can see that it's kind of given it that mouth edge there. So we're going to do the same down the bottom here. We're going to select the bit that we're going to transform and then uh, edit, transform, 
warp and we're going to do the same funky chicken there now my computer is running a bit jaggedy probably because of what I've got running the screen recorder and whatnot so it's actually a little bit difficult for me to see exactly what I'm doing here but that's okay we will make do with best we can try to make sure your lines stay matching up down the bottom there there you go so if you're happy with that you press the tick control D to deselect now that looks a bit ugly doesn't it so what we're going to do now so we're going to grab our wonderful eraser tool make sure you're on the layer copy again make that a reasonable size one that you can work with and then we're just going to hide the bottom layer oh look at that see that's why we make a duplicate see all those they're the edges from our skewing from our warping so we're going to try and make sure that we leave the green there excellent so let's clean that up now if we put that back on you'll notice the apple's still there so back onto the bottom layer clean that one up because you'll notice it on that bottom layer now though on the apple we don't have all those really bad bits um, from where the transform kind of pull the image apart okay so now if we come back up here you'll notice that we've got that lovely transparent section so we're going to paint that and to do that there's a couple of ways we can do it we can grab the paintbrush come down to our color and then select the white from outside and then just paint to our heart's content like that looks like I may have left some tooth or something there up on the line so if that's the case I'll come up and get rid of that there we go but you'll notice that down the bottom here we've also got that so introduce you to another wonderful tool the clone stamp if you press alt that's where your target comes from and then you just draw in making sure of course that you're on the right layer and you should you should he says hopefully see that blending in right so that doesn't look that great but then you play with the blur tool just to blur it all in and there you go control minus out and there is your fierce apple now my challenge for you is to go and make your own um, orange banana cantaloupe whatever that is watermelon um, or do that but the technique for merging the um, images together is fairly similar you need to have your two images you select the bits that you want you blur the edges and then if you need to you transform them using scale skew uh, warp like we did and then you've got that now what we can do of course is grab our text and uh, create a new layer up here call that uh, angry apple control a zoom that in oh what do you know I've still got the font from a previous um, invitation or something that I did there we go angry apple I might even add a drop shadow to that text just to make it stick out and there we go angry apple is done hope you enjoyed that just remember you can pause rewind and uh, replay it as often as you like this has been the geek teacher with the uh, Photoshop uh, tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you learn some more.